Hello my beautiful beauties and my wonderful lovelies. A pleasant morning to you. So the teachers are on strike. Boy, them all turned up points. <laughs> you know, I salute you, my teachers. I remember the days of high school. How many of you toiled not only to prepare the right syllabus for us so that we can learn succinctly, sweetly, systematically, and comprehensively. Fantastic teachers some of you were not necessarily all but you know you sought to it that we learned we learned not only cohesively learned teamwork learned harmony and unity but that we built our emotional intelligence there was a book that i read in fairly recent times by daniel goldman you know emo why emotional intelligence can matter more than intelligence quotients quotient which is iq what we call bright people sort of a thing and you know i remember having some of you there was a particular teacher that i had in school miss i think she named miss her name was miss david And Miss David or Davis, as her name was or is, she didn't only teach us the rudiments of the English language and English literature, but she wanted to teach us the rudiments of life. She wanted us to understand life. She wanted to build our comprehension skills about life. She was building our communication skills but she wanted to build her wit and be able to withstand the challenges that life would bring and never wanted us to bask in folly. She didn't want us to bask in weightless and baseless things. I remember her even quoting songs that just made no sense. She said, listen to me, see these songs that has, they have no point. Do not bask in these things, bask in things that matter. That will bring good fruit that has a solid foundation and many of you teachers you have dedicated your lives to investing in the lives of other people you really you guys should have been if not the highest paid at least in the top three highest paid workers in the world because you brought life to us you opened up our brain for us to understand life, for us to be receptive to the things of life so that we know how to dissect things, know how to compartmentalize things so that we can live the life the best way, how? With sensibility, not nonsensical. Teachers, I salute you. I know it is not easy and it is not, it is very, it's quite difficult being a teacher having lives in your hand delicate lives in your hand that you have to impart information and you 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 probably are trepidatious and fearful in imparting the wrong information as simple as we may take it whether it's a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p and my god you should be properly remunerated properly rewarded benefits should you should be saying should i take that one should i take this one should i take that one should i take this one should i take the one over there should i not because many of you deserve it not necessarily all of you not necessarily all of you some of you shouldn't even go through the the, the institutions um gates or doors because you have been a source of mayhem a thorn in the flesh to many people not just the students but your colleagues the administration some of you really don't belong there so but i would want to give that the better part you know have aided in in many of us achieving and accomplishing the things that we have achieved and accomplished i salute you teachers i know you're tired of the bad treatment i know you're tired of the poor pay you're tired of going to only wholesale because you cannot 
afford the supermarket prices even if you go from the the cheapest to the most expensive you're tired of buying only tin things you're tired of only buying scarcity this you know because the money is just sparse and scarce. You're tired of having to put back things. You're tired of not being able to travel abroad. You're tired of not being able to go to the North Coast. You're tired of not being able to give back to the poor. Give back to other charitable causes. Because your salary is little to none. Some have waited months and still have not received a salary. And it's but by the grace of God that you're still here. But by his grace and his mercy. Because you have been shafted and treated poorly. You said no more. No more. You just can't go on anymore. And I understand. And we better all. We really need to understand your plight. You see the saying that says. He who feels it knows it is real people. People don't just talk willy-nilly like that or hairy-fairy or just some figment of their imaginations or some whimp kind of a thing. It is not nice when you don't have money consistently and you have debts piling up and debtors calling you or your light is disconnected or your water is disconnected. There is no food in your cupboards or your refrigerator or even on the table. It is not a nice feeling and many teachers and other public sector workers suffer that and face that. Whether they look good on the outside, you think because they dress up or, or drive a car or live in a house or rent a house, whether they pay in mortgage or rent, that all is hunky-dory. I'm not saying that some people have not lived above their means or whatever, but not in all cases. Because if inflation is going up and cost of living is going up and your salary is less, you could have, you could have budget till you budget till you do. You're still going to be at a deficit, at a loss. So it is ignorance when people always just come with a one line for, as a, you know, to, that thing that they think fit for everyone. Oh, you're not managing your money wisely. Oh, back in the day, people, that one, compare, that's a different generation and a different time compared to now. For every one US dollar, I have to find a hundred, nearly a hundred and sixty dollars to get one dollar. A hundred to get one. One hundred and odd to get one. I want, to, I want that to sink in your muscle memory. One single one. I need a hundred and odd. <laughs> that, does that make any sense to anybody? All if you don't, 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 you don't. It still makes no sense to even the don'ts. And I'm not really say calling anybody don'ts. I want you to understand the point that I'm making. The teachers are fed up. The public sector workers are fed up. This is crazy. They're tired. Oh. <laughs> Lord have his mercy, Percy. Come down, Daddy Jesus. Take the case, take the pillow, take the bed, the dresser, the table, because Jamaica is not a real place. It's not a real country. We're not dealing with real people. Because sometimes when I see people comment on people's posts, I'm wondering if... You know, somehow there's an opening in the side of the brain and, you know, parts of the brain, the important sections, you know, leaking out, dropping out. And then they just put a little buffer to close the hole. People are suffering. They're suffering. And they have generations coming up that are taking on the suffering because things are difficult and things are tight. And all they're passing down is poverty. They don't want to. They don't know what else to do. They have no hope. We live in a country where there seems to be no hope, no future. And it's but by the grace of God that we're surviving. And indirectly, it's as though they're saying, boy, you're just born to die. I know we're going to die. But good God, I want to know that I was, born to, I, I, I was born to live. And I subscribe to that, that I was born to live. Though the physical body will die eventually, I was born to live. And by God's grace and mercy, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I will make it. And I pray that my teacher, friends and colleagues, I'm not a teacher, but we're all friends and colleagues in some way, will make it. I pray that the public sector workers will make it, that we will be properly remunerated as at March 
2023 and continuing guys follow me on tiktok subscribe to my youtube channel and please share this message